Michelle Zahner is known as an indie pop singer-songwriter, and she's her, her band is called Japanese Breakfast. But the death of her mother is what led her to write a memoir called Crying in H Mart. She spoke to us about the loss of her mom and also how it felt like losing a connection to her Korean heritage. For me, I lost my mother four years ago, and I know it's just hard, but there is a very special point to your book. And for those who don't know, what does the title Crying in H Mart convey? Sure. H Mart is a Korean grocery chain that is all over the U.S. now. It was a sort of refuge for me after my mother passed away. I found myself really struggling to have beautiful memories of my mother because so much of it was sort of clouded over by the trauma of caretaking when she was sick. And so for the first time when I went to H Mart, it sort of uncovered a lot of the really beautiful memories from my childhood and the foods that we used to eat together. And so I found myself returning there over and over again. That's beautiful. It really is beautiful. Uh, were you surprised by the reaction to the your original piece, Crying H Mart? I was so surprised. I thought that the story was just so, so personal to me and was maybe such a niche experience of growing up mixed race and connecting to my mother's memory through food. But so many people had such an intense response to that piece and kind of went on to prove that, you know, the more personal you think something is, the more universal it tends to wind up. I love that phrase. It's so, so very true. And we are trying to be more aware of the intersectional identities. Describe what it's like growing up as a multiracial millennial in the Pacific Northwest and how that impacts your identity today. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, as an adolescent, anything that makes you different from your peers is just the most embarrassing thing to cope with at that age. And so for me growing up in a town like Eugene, Oregon, which is predominantly white, it was somewhat difficult for me in my adolescence. And I wasn't really able to appreciate my mixed race identity, I think until I was a young adult. And so a lot of this book is about sort of returning to that. Do you feel guilt over that sometimes when you think back? I do, absolutely, yeah. But I also forgive myself for it because I think it's a really common thing to feel. And at that age, you know, you're just mortified by everything. But I, I don't really blame myself for that either. Good, good. I was gonna say, <laughs> let that go because we, we do that. I, it's a hard thing. But I think overall, I guess, what do you want people to take away from your book? I think that the best thing that people can take away from this book is feeling like, that daughter really loved her mother and I should go have lunch with mine. Oh, <laughs> I, I promised myself, I said, you're not gonna make me cry. But it is, it's such a, you know, I love that because I, you know, we all have friends who, oh, my mom, this, and you go, until you lose her, you can't truly appreciate how special she is. Um, all right, changing the subject before you make me cry. Um, you're a musician. What has it been like writing music and a book? They are such wildly different experience I've found. Um, I find music writing to be so much more intuitive and all heart in a way. And I find writing this book is a little bit more heady and analytical and there's no real skipping steps in writing a book. It's also been wonderful to just see the response to this book because it's such a direct way of communication um, that's a little bit different from, from music where there's so much more that's sort of upper interpretation and these sort of fragments of feeling. Which uh, music can convey, it's just incredible. And I understand you're coming, you're making a tour stop here in September. Hopefully we can actually see each other in person at that point. I would love that. We actually have such a wonderful crowd in Seattle there's this sort of running joke for some reason that every Seattle show we play people bring fruit and it started with uh me sending a banana out in the crowd and getting an orange and an apple back and so now uh every time we play a show in Seattle the fans try to one-up the show before and bring various weird types of fruit so I'm really looking forward to our show in Seattle <laughs> All right, all right, game on. I'm going to the farmer's market. We're going to get you some fruit. Thank you <laughs> yeah. so much, Michelle, for taking the time.